Uh, let's go to former uh, White House senior economic advisor, Steve Moore, on this. Steve, always good to have you. The president is saying or tweeted out earlier today that this budget deal, the one they're hammering out in the Senate, likely to approve, um, is, is a good deal and, and, and that everyone will have plenty of time to cut. I assume he's saying if he were reelected. Uh, do you agree with that? No, not exactly. Look, I, I think that the White House made a political calculation here, Neil, to, to, to buy some peace and get get the budget and the debt ceiling passed the next election uh, so that we don't have a big fight, you know, 30 or 60 days before, you know, one of the most important elections of our lifetime. But I got to tell you, there are a lot of uh, conservatives around the country who are just not happy about the overspending that's happened. You know, this is $300 billion above the, the caps that, uh, that the conservatives and Republicans and fought, uh, you know, very valiantly for. And by the way, Neil, I think you said uh, that I, I, I may have misheard you, but I think you said that there might be a half dozen Republicans that voted uh, would vote against this in the Senate. I, I would hope that it would be a lot more than that, because I think Republicans have to be the party of limited government and balanced budgets. And this is far from that. All right. Well, they have to make that up then with other Democrats to offset that this thing is to pass or to the well, president. Well, they're, they're not going to be able to defeat this, but I think it is important for conservatives to stand up and say, look, we're just spending way too but much they're not, money in they're, Washington. They're not in any numbers. Uh, Neil, you they're, know, they're, they're uh, not in any numbers that are significant. Now, I understand what you're saying about the exactly. political expediency yeah. of this. Get the funding you want for defense. Get the funding the Democrats want for non-defense items. I get that. But the fact of the matter is, when the president last year was showing this huge budget and he was just apoplectic about it, this is bigger than that one. It is. It's, it's hard to defend. Again, I, I understand why the president wants to get uh, not have a big fight on the debt ceiling. We don't want to we don't want to have to deal with, a, you know, going right up to the edge, as we've seen in some previous years. But I think a lot of conservatives just feel they wish Republicans had a little bit more fight in them on the budget. I mean, I'm, I'm a big defender of this president. I love what he's done on the economy. It's hard to defend the fiscal record here, though. We've seen big increases in spending. And you right. said it very well, Neil, the, the deal over the last couple of years has been, you know, Donald Trump gets the additional spending that he wants for the military, and Nancy Pelosi gets the additional spending she wants for the social programs, and we, you know, we're looking at trillion-dollar deficits for as far as the eye can see. Now, do I think those are economically crippling? No, but I do think they're too high, and I, I, I think a lot of voters would like to see Trump, you know, start to veto and, and use the veto pen to, to, uh, to get rid of some of the additional spending that, that is just unnecessary. Steve, as you're talking there, we are getting confirmation that a majority of the U.S. Senate will be uh, increasing federal spending, suspending the debt limit, so essentially passing this. We don't have a breakdown on what will be the likely vote, how many Republicans, Democrats, et cetera. But this occurs a day after we had the Federal Reserve indicate that it was going to cut rates a quarter point and did, but then telegraphed that might, that might be it. Um, there was confusion in, in Jerome Powell's comments <laughs> afterwards. Do you think he right. really means to leave it at one and done? Well, first of all, I've, I wanted to say I feel a little personally vindicated because I've been arguing for nine months, uh, somewhat controversially, that the Fed should be uh, lowering rates. I think, and I think the president agrees with me on this, that the rate increases we had in September and then the catastrophically bad decision by the Fed, uh, by Jerome Powell and the Federal Reserve Board, to raise rates in, de in December, which, which really hurt the economy. You remember what happened to the stock market. It fell by, sure. what, 2,000 points. Uh, they need to reverse. But now, essentially what the Fed did yesterday was reverse the December rate increase, and, and that was a good, solid start, but now they have to reverse the, the, uh, the rate increase that happened in September. And, and by the way, there's all this talk why did it, why about do they have to interest do rates. Why so, do they have to do that? Because the, there's not enough dollar liquidity in the economy right now to sustain the 3 to 4 percent growth that we, you know, when we put the economic program together for Trump, we believe you can get this economy growing at 3 to 4 percent. And by the way, Neil, if you go back to the summer of, uh, of last summer, a year ago, you know, we were growing at 3.5 percent. There was no signs of inflation. Uh, we had nice wage gains. Everything was going beautifully with the economy. And the Fed you know, disrupted that beautiful picture by raising rates. And, and we need to get back to the 3 to 4% growth think the president's We are, we are you don't very think any capable of, the of that. Trade and there's just war. not enough wait, dollar wait, wait, liquidity no, no, Steve, in the economy. Steve, Steve. What's going do you, on? Steve, do Sorry. you think that, that the president had any hand in that at all with, with taking on China, taking on Mexico, taking on Canada? You don't think that was disrupted? The very move that the Federal Reserve made 
yesterday, we are told at least, if you buy the headlines, was based yeah. on addressing the, the, the oomph we got from the, the trade battles, right? So, look, I, absolutely, the, the, the tra trade disputes have knocked some, uh, you know, some growth. Uh, there's no question about it. And by the way, I support what the president is doing on China. I think we have to fight this fight against China. They're a bad actor. They're, they've become a menace to the American economy and as a security threat. And so I'm totally behind Trump on this, but right. we shouldn't fool ourselves. This is, this is short-term pain for hopefully long-term gain when we get a deal. But my point is, if you look at prices right now, Neil, if you could show me any indication any indication that we have of an inflation problem in this economy then i'd be then i'd say stop you know, stop reducing rates. But there is no de inflation in the economy, none. In fact, the last four or five months, the Fed has come in below its, uh, you know, the, the inflation rate has become, come in below its target. The, the fact that you've got the 10-year Treasury bill at 2% interest rates, what is that an indication of? It means that people are, there's no fear of inflation. Nobody would buy a 10-year bond if they thought inflation was going to run to 3 to 4%. All and right. so I do think there's excessive money, monetary tightness. Everybody wants to invest in the United States, to invest in the U.S., you have to have dollars. And my big you know, complaint about the Fed is there's too many people over there, and I don't know about Jerome Powell, but I know a lot of the, the you know, senior economists over there still believe that economic growth causes inflation, and that's just wrong. You can have an increase in output in goods and services, and prices will fall, not rise. All right, we shall see, Steve. Um, it, it's an odd position for the Fed to be in to sort of tempt inflation to see if maybe it can rejigger some up. Always good seeing you, Steve. Thank you we very, need, very we, much. Neil, we need, we, we need more, one more rate cut. The president wants, you know, two or three more rate cuts. I'd be happy with one more in September, and I think that if I do that, Trump is well set up for a, a nice economy in 2020, especially, you're right, if he can get that trade deal with, done with China, then I think, you know, we've got smooth sailing ahead. All right. Steve, thank you very much.